We're here in the Alps, in the stunningly beautiful Mont Blanc area, to talk about air pollution. Not a subject generally associated with the mountains, is it? The air here, just as elsewhere, is not so great anymore. But here, the majestic surrounding around us that are so mesmerizing make us more aware of the sadness of the situation. In truth, it's a heartbreak. But local residents aren't standing for it and are acting to bring good air quality back to the Alps. Through the tireless work of local environmental organizations, the issue of dirty mountain air has made it to the media and also has brought a lot of awareness about this problem. We're also working to bring about solutions. After all, we're mountain people and we fight. When there's a problem, we find a solution, we find a way. Let's start with a fun fact. Did you know that 92% of the world's population are exposed to unsafe levels of air quality? This is, in fact, from the World Health Organization. Young children are particularly vulnerable to air pollution because their lungs and their organs aren't fully developed. Every single day in the world, 1,500 children under the age of five die due to air pollution. Let's zoom into France, where on a daily basis, 145 people are killed prematurely due to air pollution. This is nearly 10% of all deaths. This is 15 times more than road traffic accidents. Surprisingly, only 20% of such deaths are through respiratory causes. 80% of casualties are in fact cardiovascular related. That's heart attacks and strokes. Many doctors you will find are unaware of this fact because air pollution is actually a fairly new science and this is not taught at medical school. This chart compares the health impact of air pollution in France compared with to other countries per 100,000 of population. If you come from Sweden or Canada, you might think you've made a mistake moving to France. <laughs> if you're from the UK or Italy, on the other hand, you might think you've made a good move. The trouble is, the killer is everywhere. We've long known city air was polluted, but now we know that mountain air isn't so clean and so pure anymore. Air pollution is quite symptomatic of the way we view our environment. Let's face it, we take it for granted, we abuse it, we forget to notice how essential nature is to our life. Instead, we keep poisoning it. But in truth, we're poisoning ourselves. The air here in Chamonix is over the EU legal limit for a pollutant linked to road transport. It's called nitrogen dioxide. In the lower Arve Valley, in Passy, two other pollutants are breaching European and French standards, the benzoepirine and fine particles. They are both linked to industry and res residential heating. In summer, ozone pollution is all too present in the Alps. This is a ground level pollutant created by a reaction between the sunshine and industry and traffic emissions. But ozone loves finding areas where the air is clean. So on hot summer days, the higher you go in the mountains, the more concentrated ozone pollution becomes. The deep, narrow valleys that make our scenery so stunning here also act as a trap for pollution. Add a little cold, sunny weather in winter or hot sunshine in summer, and it all goes pear-shaped. In winter, on cold, sunny days, the air above the valley warms up faster than on the ground, therefore trapping all the air at the bottom of the valley, including all the pollutants. And this, if the nice weather carries on, then build, pollution builds up at valley level and it causes a pollution peak. This is similar, by the way, in other valley situations, like in Grenoble in France or in Salt Lake City in the US. And we are just talking about a few pollutants here. 
But just with these pollutants, we can see that the air that we breathe isn't so clean, isn't so great. Here's another fun fact. Nearly 400 pollutants have been identified linked with traffic and road infrastructure, 30 of which are cancer-causing cancer and 100 more that are known toxics. Dozen more pollutants are emitted by industry, by heating systems, and even by agriculture. And no, this is not from cows breaking wind. <laughs> This is from pesticides and chemical fertilizers. Not such a great picture, is it? As if it wasn't bad enough, some would like us to believe that the air in Chamonix is more polluted than the air in Beijing or in New Delhi. This has actually been quoted on French television. Let's get the facts right. The air in Chamonix is above World Health Standard and above, for some pollutants, above EU levels, but it's nowhere near as toxic as the air in China and as, as in India. As soon as we go up in the mountains in winter, we rise above the pollution layer and we can actually see it. This is not lovely valley haze, mountain haze. This is a pollution cloud. This pollution and over half a million trucks that cross the border to Italy through, Mont Blanc, through the Mont Blanc Tunnel every year have long been un unacceptable to people living here. The local movement for the protection of the environment has been going strong for 20 years in Chamonix, and this in spite of the strong forces against us. You've all heard of the road lobby, the car lobby, the oil lobby, the diesel lobby, well, let me tell you, they do exist, and we soon find out, found out about their incredible power the hard way. Five years ago, we citizens decided to do things differently by launching a visible and active campaign for air quality, and we quickly started getting results. Trying to get politicians to initiate big changes and uh, implement an entirely new transport policy wasn't working. So we created a non-profit organization called Inspire and with a bottom-up approach to show many people cared and wanted change. We set a three-point strategy. Work on a few chosen issues and get results. Get many people involved so decision makers can no longer ignore us and be positive and offer solutions to politicians, but also to the general public, so they actually want to be part of our movement. This quickly became a success, and politicians started to notice us and ask us for our suggestions and our expertise. And even on the mammoth issue of international goods transport, we started making headways. For the first time in France, we managed to get a local decree saying that during pollution peaks, trucks can be temporarily banned from Mont Blanc Tunnel in order to protect public health. When you consider that one of the founding principles of European law is the free circulation of, mo free movement of people and goods, this was actually a big result. A big hurdle for us is that uh, local politicians and mayors have actually no jurisdiction whatsoever over the traffic going through Mont Blanc Tunnel or its access road. This is actually the preserve of the French and Italian governments. And we need to attract their attention to try and get measures applied. And this is such a difficult task. All of this pollution, worldwide or local, you realize is in reality man-made pollution. Of course, we all love blaming someone else for it. Some say the trucks are to blame, others say it's industry. Some like it to blame it all on politicians or on their neighbours. All of this is partially true, but in fact we are all responsible for the toxic air that we breathe, through our cars, through our heating systems, and also through what we buy. Because let's not forget that most goods travel long distances to get to us. 
and have a huge effect on the air quality but also on our climate. Yes, pollution is a global issue, but it is at local level that we can most efficiently act to reduce it. If we want to breathe, breathe better air, we need to reduce all types of emissions. So here's another fact. Locally, nearly 60% of particles are from our heating systems, and 40% of traffic gases are emitted from our cars, mostly diesels. So what can we do? Here's, here are a few tips. We have actually an effect, direct effect, on three sources of pollution, emissions. Our homes and energy consumption, what we buy, and our trips and travels. Regarding our homes, the most efficient solution is obviously to insulate them better so we reduce consumption, whatever the source of energy. Then comes the, so the choice of energy. Direct solar heating is by far the cheapest and cleanest energy. Retrieving the heat from the ground through a heat pump is also a clean solution. Gas is a halfway house as it emits no particles, but it emits greenhouse gases <coughs> and other pollutants. And then there's wood burning heating. Much vilified because of its particles emissions. So how bad is it? When we think of the mountains, we picture beautiful mountain chalets and crackling open fireplaces. <coughs> well, here's a fact. An open fireplace emits up to 100 times more particles than an efficient wood-burning stove. In a modern stove, the fire is raging behind the glass door and the emissions are efficiently burned through a double combustion system. This type of system is acceptable in terms of emissions. It also uses a local source of, of energy, needing little transport, and it also uh, emits less CO2 than uh, fossil fuels. With an open fireplace, the pollution is also worse inside our homes. That lovely smell of burning wood, the relaxing sight of a crackling open fire, a sure sign that we are breathing in great quantities of particles. One thing we can and must all do is to avoid using open fireplaces as much as possible. Regarding our purchases, uh, this is a less direct uh, impact, but, it, but it, it is our impact on air quality. Try and buy product that is as local as possible. Markets are a great place to start, and they are so lovely here in France. Make it as seasonal as possible, because the goods produced will be uh, grown closer and need less transport. Here's another fun-filled fact. One kilo of apple coming from South Africa needs five litres of oil to get here whereas one kilo of apple grown in France needs 10 time, 20 times less oil than that. Our trips and travels are our most direct impact on air quality, and it's probably our biggest effect on overall air pollution. You probably think you and your children are protected from the outside air when you're safely ensconced in your car with the aircon on. Think again. The confined space of a car is in fact a trap for pollution, especially gases. So inside your car, you're five times more exposed to pollution, to air pollution, than a cyclist outside on the same route. For better air quality, we need to rethink our trips, reduce the use of highly emitting fossil fuel transport. We need to try and bring into the mix more walking and cycling because they are obviously the cleanest way of, of, of getting around. We can also use public transport and car sharing and for longer distances take the train. In Western Europe trains are pretty damn good and efficient. When taking into account the complete door-to-door -door cost and time they're also pretty competitive. 
It's also a very civilized way of traveling. But don't take my word for it. Try it yourself. Many of you will think, ah, what's the use of such small tips, steps? Well, let me assure you, they do matter. Because when millions of us make small changes to our habits, imagine what that can do to overall air quality. And last but not least, give a helping hand to environmental organizations whose volunteers do an amazing job trying to protect the environment, achieve better quality, and therefore protect our health and our future. Locally, here's one accomplishment we had. We organized our first Velorution, that's a bike rally here in 2014. Hundreds of people turned up and the mayor of Chamonix publicly recognized that not enough had been done for cycling facilities. He promised more soon. Feeling the strength of public opinion behind him, he convinced the local council to vote in a plan and funding over four years to build cycle lanes. In 2016, a new cycle lane was built and more will follow. We organize many such events and we need people engaged to make a difference. And we would love for you to join us too. Thank you.